miles from the frosty streets of St. Petersburg, this is a new hub for Russia's infamous trolls. A CNN investigation has found that Accra, Ghana is the launch pad for an online operation to stoke racial tensions and stir up social unrest in the U.S. ahead of the 2020 election. On Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, hundreds of accounts churned out posts about issues such as racism and police brutality in the U.S. For months now, we've been investigating this network of trolls targeting African-Americans, and now we've actually come here to Ghana to try to get the full story. In the run-up to our journey, we had discovered that all of the accounts were connected to an NGO called Eliminating Barriers for the Liberation of Africa, known as EBLA, or EBLA. Looking at the website, it was clear something was off. Parts of it still had dummy text. It was impossible to make an actual donation. And most mysteriously, one of the photographs had a Russian file name. Though the group claimed to be focused on issues like poverty in Ghana, its employees posted almost exclusively about the U.S. Some used incendiary language. America's descent into a fascist police state continues. Someone needs to take that senator out. Often they posted on real U.S. groups an attempt to gain legitimacy and build an audience. Many even implied they were in America. We all are sick and tired of the violence that's taking place in our communities. In reality, they were here, in a nondescript house on the outskirts of Ghana's capital. This is the compound where the operation has been based. There's no sign for an NGO. We're about an hour outside of the city. And you can see this is a very secluded residential area. And people here have been telling us that about three weeks ago, Ghanaian security services showed up here, raided the building, and no one's been back since. Sources in Ghana's national security tell CNN that all of EPLA's funding came from Russia. After the raid, the accounts went quiet for a few days. Then on Instagram, the group changed their handle names and started posting again. We're heading out now to meet one of the EBLA employees. They don't actually know that CNN is coming to this meeting, but we're desperately hoping they might be able to give us some more information about how the NGO works and who might be behind it. After some discussion about their safety, the employee agrees to talk to us provided we keep her identity hidden. We sit down in a secure location. She tells us she was hired in September of 2019 and had no idea she would be working as a Russian troll. Tell me more about your training. So we were trained to use relevant hashtags. So if I'm posting about Black Lives Matter, I should add a hashtag about probably Beyonce. The 16 employees were each given different areas to focus on. Racism, police brutality, feminism. Initially, your success is measured by the number of people you reach. But most importantly, you have to get followers all right. The tactics are strikingly similar to those used by Russia's internet research agency, known as the IRA, ahead of the U.S. presidential election in 2016. The aim? To pit Americans against each other and create mistrust of the political system. Run by Yevgeny Prigozhin, a close associate of President Putin, the IRA was later sanctioned by the U.S. This time the Russians appear to be outsourcing some of their troll networks, offering plausible deniability. The employee tells us her boss was a South African who called himself Mr. Amara. He certainly was a passionate person about helping people. Did you know if Mr. Amara spoke any languages other than English? According to what I heard, he spoke Russian to me. But Mr. Amara is not South African. In fact, he is not Mr. Amara at all. CNN has learned his real name is Seth Waredu, and he is Ghanaian. Moredu has worked and studied in Russia for many years. 
Months after starting the Ghana operation, he opened a second branch in Nigeria. In January of this year, Edla even posted a job on LinkedIn in Charleston, South Carolina. The raid by Ghana's security services did not stop Waredu. On our last day in Accra, we find out that he has organized a secret meeting of employees on a university campus. He tells them to create more accounts and promises they will get paid soon. As the meeting finishes, we approach him wearing a hidden camera and greet him in Russian. Hi, my name's Clarissa Ward. I work for CNN. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. I just had a couple of questions for you about Ebla. Okay. And why you posted this job in the U.S. in Charleston, South Carolina? Uh, well, it's actually so strange for someone to come and ask you about UVLA right now, so I don't know how, how much uh, I can get help you. Are you aware that there's a presidential election in November? No. You're not aware of that? Uh, uh, there's one in, in, um, in Ghana. How long have you been working for the IRA, for the Troll Factory? In what St. Petersburg, Russia. So well, I don't know. I don't know what IRA is, so I can't say that I'm working for IRA. So, so why do you call yourself Mr. Amada and say that you're know. South African? I just think it's, it's my own personal something. Everyone can call themselves anything that they want. Anyone can transform it into whatever they want. Yeah. Protect my okay. I'm doing this one. I'm doing this for my own people. So, but you're actually doing it for Russia, so you might want to explain to God that there was a mix-up. He repeatedly denies running a Russian troll factory, and with that, our conversation ends. Here he comes. Moments later, we see Waredu drive off in a red Mercedes. Wherever his money comes from, he seems to be doing well. The room where Ebla's trolls once sat now stands empty. But similar operations out there may be ramping up as efforts to influence the 2020 election continue. We reached out to all of the 16 Ebla employees in Ghana. They all told us the same thing, Anderson, which is that they had no idea that they were working for a Russian troll factory. And just today and in the past few days, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook have taken down all of those accounts, 274 of them, reaching nearly a quarter of a million people, most of them Americans. But remarkably, Anderson, they say this is actually really a success story, that this was still in the early stages of becoming what could have been a very pernicious campaign to meddle with the U.S. election, Anderson. You wonder how many more there are out there and exactly where they are. It's fascinating to see that in Ghana. Of course, award. thank you so much. Really fascinating for you and your team.